Welcome to Magician Recaps Explains. In today's video, we're going to summarize a crime and action movie called Avengement, a movie which was released in 2019. There are so many spoilers ahead, so subscribe and let's roll out. Bell Marsh is the name of a dangerous prison in London. It is the home of rapists, murderers and other dangerous criminals and thugs. Among them is a brutal scarred face prisoner called Kane Burgess Scott Adkins, who has a metal heart and teeth. He had been continuously attacked by other inmates for a reason not known to him, but irrespective of their number, he was able to beat them up every time. In spite of his scary looks, he is a good person within, but the prison changed him into a deadly person who can kill, even with his bare hands. On a certain day, Kane is being sent to the hospital to visit his sick mother, escorted by a high security team. When he gets to his mother's bed, he realizes that she has just passed away, and if he had got there a little earlier, he might have had a chance to say goodbye to her. Despite his deep sadness and mourning, he shows nothing on the surface, and he seems to have learned to hide the emotions in prison. After spending the last moments with his dead mother, they send him away. In the elevator, one of the guards tells him to behave well now on, making him to unexpectedly begins beating them. He is so fast and brutal that they didn't get time to defend themselves, and the resistance cost them being knocked out and falling through the elevator floor. He then runs to the hospital back or and makes a successful getaway. In the next scene, Kane can be seen trying to enter a private bar, but is stopped by the bouncer's good but rugged bartender called Bez Kirsten Waring. He introduces himself as a member and orders for a long glad group of people seated on the opposite side of the bar. They belong to a gang that has recently brought down its activities due to the murder of one of its members named Rook Daniel Adegboyagon and the disappearance of the accountant Toon Thomas Turgis. One of the gang members who saw Rook's murder begins describing it, in his version of what happened, while they are distributing drugs at their usual hangout. Suddenly, they notice someone standing nearby and looking at them in the darkness of the night. As Toon is busily dealing with the customer, Rook goes to him with no fear and tries to punch him in the faint blood. Toon reveals that, after seeing the incident after, and begins to mock Toon because he sees the guy is not tough enough to make someone to run away. He claims that, Toon is telling lies, and he was the one who actually ran away like a mad dog, after Rook was killed. Enraged by Kane's words, one shark and corrupt businessman, named Lincoln, Craig Fairbrass, who does anything to make illegal money, and literally he's also Kane's brother, but instead, he gets Hyde, Nick Moran, Lincoln's most trusted assistant, who vividly remembers Kane. He introduces Kane to the rest of the gang as the boss's brother, who made a mistake and ended up in prison. Hyde is also not in fear to make mockery of Kane's facial scars and any possible harassment he may have gone through while he was imprisoned. At this moment, one of the bouncers attacks Kane, but before he can, as he's in a pains, he starts screaming in terror, so Kane decides to kick him in the face, knocking him unconscious. Or Kane proves by showing them the rogues ever beating Hyde, Kane put a blame on him and Lincoln for his imprisonment and orders him to call his brother and bring him there. The story, a few years ago when Kane was a struggling regular boxer, Lincoln is playing cards along with his gang, Rook and his accountant, Stokes, Terence Maynard. All three have lost bets on Kane because he couldn't even lose a boxing match. Before Lincoln can respond, Rook scolds Kane for his ridiculous offer and insults him. In line with Rook, Lincoln prefers not to lend the money because of Kane's bet out knowing what it is. He heads to Hyde's office and receives the required information. Kane is told that all he has to do is steal a plastic bag from a poor woman and return it to the office. Unaware of the consequences, Kane does the robbery, surprisingly. The chase continues until the woman is hit by a car, and Kane, who is stunned by the scene, is immediately arrested. A few days later, he meets O'Hare Lewis Mandeler, an elite detective, who has spent years monitoring his brother. During this meeting, he's informed that his brother runs a dirty loan business, in which the borrowed money is stolen, before he can use it, which causes the prey to become more and more in debt. And this leads to a point where the business seizes all of the prey's personal property, including their home and vehicle. The detective persuades Kane to give up Lincoln, but even knowing all of his evil actions, Kane refuses and sticks by his brother. Now he got his hands dirty in three cases, which are robbery, manslaughter, and organized crime but the possibility of his brother helping encourages him to not give up. He's introduced to a muscular and tough interrogator, called Sergeant Evans, a corrupt cop, who tortures suspects for confessions without detectives' permission. Kane is severely beaten by Evans, and despite retaliating with tied-up hands, 
Evan's hard punches eventually knock him out of the dirtiest and most violent prison. And on the first day, he is attacked by a strong man for no reason. Kane tries to defend, but soon finds himself in a severe fight with other inmates. After knocking down a few of them, they finally catch him and ruthlessly break his front teeth. Due to this incident, he gets metal dentures, which he kind of likes, just because they make Mrs. Burgess tells Kane that Lincoln blames him for his imprisonment, so he will not take any action. Upon hearing this, Kane realizes that his loyalty to Lincoln was fruitless and that his brother had abandoned him in jail, despite the fact that he was the reason he was in prison in the first place. Regardless, Lincoln calls him. Days had passed with no word from Lincoln, no meetings, no phone call and not even a letter. Kane finally realized that he was all alone and had to stand on his own. During his time in prison, he was regularly attacked by other inmates, and he was never even aware of their reasons, yet he had no options but to defend himself. So he started a serious physical and mental program to prepare himself for the incoming attacks. On a regular day in the prison yard, he gets into a fight with two other prisoners. Due to his extremely difficult training program, Kane can easily knock the duo down with a few punches. After severely beating them, elated at having beaten the attackers, Kane hears something shocking. An angry severely beaten inmate informs him that his brother has set a 20,000 pound prize on his head, making it known that this is the reason for all the attacks that happened to him day and night. Enraged by hearing this, he now had a reason to live the desire to exact vengeance on those who had brought this dark times upon him. This did not allow him to easily give up. The prize money was persuading more and more prisoners each and every day, however Kane's reasons and power increased as their number grew. Each fight ended in a wound, and a few months of additional sentences, and also a few days in solitary confinement. In order to kill Kane, the prisoner has made use of every available tool, including a prison-made version of the flammable chemical liquid, known as napalm, that made his face to partially burn. Kane was gradually turning into a bloodthirsty monster, who couldn't even recognize himself. A person whose only objective was to survive, and in this manner, he didn't show mercy to anyone, even the prison guards were weak to him and several of them got seriously hurt. Kane has been in prison for three years, and one day, his mother pays him a visit to deliver bad news. He's informed that she has pancreatic cancer, and she won't be able to see him too much. Shocked by hearing this, Kane is unable to explain his mother what a terrible thing Lincoln did, as he's now his mother's only confidant. A long time had passed and Mrs. Burgess's condition had deteriorated. Detective O'Hara pays a visit to Kane, who is in the hospital being treated for one of his regular conflicts. In this meeting, it becomes obvious to Kane that Sergeant Evans the corrupt officer who brutally tortured him was one of Lincoln's ears and was working for him as a spy. Detective O'Hara informs Kane that he had Evans fired as soon as he found out about the matter and that he knows Lincoln wants him dead, so he asks him again to give up Lincoln. This time Kane agrees to give the detective what he wants and trade with one last meeting with his dying mother. So as we saw in the beginning of the movie, he got himself an escape window through the hospital and used it successfully. Of the gang. He is almost ready to pay them back but he demands a vivid explanation for why Lincoln wanted to kill him first. After pulling off the failed blood brother trauma, Lincoln eventually reveals that he had no choice but to do it, because one of his spies found out that chose to trust the corrupt police officer, who is no longer able to work for him, because Kane recently passed by him at his new workplace. And after a long fight, Kane killed him with a hammer blow to the head. Impressed by his brother's intelligence and meticulous planning, Lincoln promises him a new life and a fresh start, but Kane ignores Lincoln's words and instead shoots Hyde. Brutally cracks his head which causes him a sudden death that is more painful to witnesses. Lincoln who still is dealing with the terrible death of his best assistant, faces the next strike from Kane. It is hard for him to believe, but only 1,500 pounds are left in his account. Apparently, the Evans' workplace was not his only stop after escaping, and he also went to Stokes. Back to the meeting day with Stokes, he tries to intimidate Kane by pulling out a shotgun, but Kane outsmart him and takes it as a joke, and he's so he donates the entire 2.2 million pounds in his account to the families that Lincoln's loan business has impacted. Lincoln is left with nothing but his gang. He believes Kane will be killed this night, as there are only two bullets left for him, and they are also ten in number. However, Kane soon is scared and escape, but this time, he returns with a submachine gun and starts shooting at Kane, in a funny way, none of Toon's shots hit him. The remaining strong guys are able to attack Kane several times with kicks, punches and knives, however one by one, they are slaughtered in a horrible way. 
one by breaking his arm and striking him hard in the head, another one by vampire-like biting in the neck, and one by repeatedly stabbing him in the throat. At this time, only Lincoln and Kane are left with a shotgun pointed at Kane. Lincoln reveals to him that he doesn't care whether the man wanted to snitch on him or not. He had put a bounty on his head simply because he was destroying Kane's reputation among his partners. After revealing the truth, Lincoln pulls the trigger, but he is surprised to find that there are no bullets left. Kane who was aware that the cup for his brother's evil doings, and aside from Kane's satisfaction, the retaliation has benefited the praise and Detective O'Hara as well that's the end of the movie, thanks for watching, subscribe and turn on the notification bell for more contents like this.